Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back everybody. I hope you're all staying safe and having a great weekend. My name is Andy with Boatworks Today and in this video we're going to be going over the poll results from last weekend where I let you guys decide what direction I was going to be going with the rebuild of this transom as well as with spring right around the corner we're going to share some tips and tricks on how to make your boat ready and look its best for spring. So with that said, let's jump right into it. Now in last week's video I put out a poll basically asking for your feedback on what direction I should take this transom. Should I basically rip everything out and start over from scratch or should I clean it up and basically build off of what, you know, what's currently here? And there was a total of 1,400 responses, and thank you for everybody that participated. And the results were basically split 60-40, with the majority going towards to basically clean this up and work with what's here. Uh, so that's the direction I got started with. And the first thing that I wanted to focus on was to remove this old patch out of the port side keyhole. Now, admittedly, you know, ha swinging away at a chisel isn't very exciting work, and a lot of times when I'm doing this, my mind has a tendency to wander. M most of the time, they're pretty civil conversations, but every once in a while, you know, things can get a little heated. Before you laugh, let me just say, until you've gotten into an argument with yourself, you have not lived. But anyways, so one thing I noticed as I was sitting here uh, chipping this away is that I was, I was having a hard time focusing on the top of the, uh, the, top of the chisel with the hammer. And I just kind of made the, the comment to myself that, Miller, you got to get your eyes checked. And then one thing led to another, and before I knew it, I was calling myself an old man. Well, all of a sudden, something, something kind of dawned on me. I'm like, well, wait a minute. You know, if I'm, I'm 47, 47, 48, I believe. Uh, well, this boat was built the same year that I was born. So that means that this boat, and specifically this original transom, well, that's also 47 or 48 years old. But, you know, whatever. I mean, it may have a few miles on it, but at least it's still in good condition, right? So I kept on chipping away and trying to remove this this uh, old wood as carefully as I could. I didn't want to punch through the, the fiberglass skin on the outside. And, t and then I got to this area. Well, once I removed that plug right there, and especially the one over on the other side, I noticed a stink that is something that I haven't smelled in a long time. And about all I could say at that point was, huh. Now, if you've ever had to do any blister repair on the hull of your boat, uh, basically when you open them up, you get this juice, you know, that, that comes out of the blister. And it just, it, it smells like a mixture of vinegar and ass. I mean, it, it, it's kind of hard to explain, but if, if it's something you've ever smelled, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And it was basically, when that happened, I, or when I smelled that, I just got a really, really uneasy feeling in my stomach, and I just, Mm. Now, when I first started chipping away at this and kind of removing out the, I guess, the first patch around that, that keyhole, uh, going into it, honestly, I had a pretty good feeling about this. I, I just, I felt solid about it. I think, I thought this was a good direction to go. Uh, but the further I got into it, there's just some things that just didn't add up. I mean, setting aside the stink factor, uh, just some things that didn't add up. And it just, it, I didn't have a very good feeling about it overall. So after about three hours of chipping, this is uh, all the old filler material that was put into this keyhole uh, by the previous person. And uh, after getting all that, you know, more or less cleaned out, there were some things that just kind of, that just kind of jumped out at me here. Uh, the first one being this little spot right here. I thought, well, you know, how bad can it really be? Well, there's about, about a six inch long void traveling right down around here and it basically yeah basically went right down to this hole from all the way up from here now I don't know how far over this goes I'm guessing probably not that far but I don't know so the next thought process was that I'm like all right well I noticed this uh, at first I'm like oh cool that's kind of a neat little liner in here it goes all the way around the inside of this keyhole all right, now I will admit, uh, I don't know if the, the inside of that liner around this keyhole, if that is original or not. Uh, at, at first I thought that it kind of wasn't. I thought, all right, well, sweet. You know, that's kind of a nice little touch that uh, they, they did coming out of Bertram. And then it crossed my mind of that, well, what if it's not original? What if this was added in after the fact? And if it was, what's it trying to cover up? It just kind of slowly seemed like that the cards were being stacked against uh, being able to build off of on, on top of this. And actually, when it was all said and done, have a good solid feeling about the uh, you know what the end result was going to be. So with the things that I was noticing after literally just getting started you know tearing into this transom, 
uh, you know, taking that and then also taking into account the actual age of this, uh, of this boat, I mean, this boat is pushing almost 50 years old. Uh, surprisingly, when you look around at it, it doesn't look like it's that old. Uh, the previous uh, person that worked on it before me had done quite a bit uh, cosmetically. It ended up being more of a lipstick on a pig kind of a thing, but it certainly does not look like a 50-year-old boat. And, you know, that's something I need to keep in mind. Now, it wasn't until late Wednesday afternoon that all these pieces started to kind of fall into place for me as far as, you know, not getting a very good feeling on the direction that I was headed with this transom. And by that time, the week is already half over. Now, by, you know, I, was, I went into this week prepared to, and tooled up to remove, you know, open up the old keyholes as well as do some, you know, some selective things here and there, mostly grinding. Uh, however, I was not tooled up to actually get in here and do some major surgery. So I need to order some blades and get those on the way, but that doesn't do me any good for this week. Now, I think you understand where I'm, going, where I'm headed with this. Uh, for everyone last week that was voting for a total transfer replacement, giddy up. So with spring right around the corner and the, the world essentially being on house arrest or you know lockdown, uh, I know that there are a lot of people taking this time to basically get some projects knocked out on their boat so that come springtime, hopefully you know it'll, everything will be done and be ready to go. So over the next few weeks, what I'm going to be doing is incorporating kind of like a, a quick tip slash product segment uh, into the videos as part of this transfer rebuild, just to add a little bit of diversity. So for this week, the first thing I want to focus on is filling some old holes and specifically some screw holes. I'm not talking about you know, you punched a basketball through your boat kind of a hole, uh, but you know, old screws and old, you know, bolt holes, because those are basically very, very common things that almost every boat owner is gonna run into at some point. So now going back about four or five years ago, I had already kind of somewhat touched on this, but at that time, the product that I was using was very, very difficult to find. I mean, really nobody carried it. Jamestown didn't carry it, Port Supply didn't carry it, West Marine didn't have it. Like I said, it was just very, very difficult to find. So I kind of wanted to revisit that again now that products have evolved a little bit and basically show you the, the product that I'm using now that is much more readily available. And the product that I'm referring to is made by Total Boat. It is their polyester structural repair putty, which is essentially it's a pre-thickened polyester resin uh, that has some, you know, glass milled fibers, that, you know, kind of mixed in just to add some additional strength. So now when you're looking for something to fill small holes or even prep larger holes for fiberglass, this stuff works fantastic. And because it's polyester based, you'll be able to go over top of this with gel coat and you won't have any issues with compatibility or, or bonding. So now what I'm gonna be using for this example, this is actually, it's the cutoff transom from Boston Whaler that I did a couple of years ago. And specifically the two areas I'm gonna be focusing on are right here and here. Now this, uh, this hole here, this is about a half inch diameter and this one over here, this is a little bit closer to like an eighth inch. Now the reason I'm gonna be doing two of them side by side is because they're each gonna be treated a little bit differently. So now my general rule of thumb is that holes that are say a quarter inch or smaller, they can just, when you're using this compound, they can just be filled, sanded flush and then finished. Now holes that are larger than that, uh, they just as a bit of a belt and suspenders approach, you really need to have a bit of a glass skin over top of them. So the larger holes, they'll be getting filled, sanded in with a little bit of a dimple with a couple layers of chop strand matting over top, sanded that flush, and then you're gonna be ready for finishing. So now to prep these areas, the first thing I wanna do is I actually wanna come in and over drill each of these holes. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna expose some fresh, clean fiberglass around the edges of these holes, which is going to allow me to get a very good bond with this, uh, with this filler. Now, unfortunately, this, this is the largest drill bit that I have, which happens to be the exact same size as this hole. So when I'm doing this, I'm basically just going to have to wobble it around inside of here just to try and expose a fresh, clean edge in here. Now, by sanding these two areas down, I basically I created a dimple uh, right along the top, and at least this is uh, the larger hole here. So I dimpled it down enough where I should be able to get two layers of chop strand matting laid in over top of the, the filler that's going to be inside this opening here. And I should still be pretty close to being flush to the surrounding area uh, once this is all sanded down. Now over on the smaller one, you notice I didn't go, I didn't dish it down quite as far because, well, I'm not going to be laying any glass in here. Uh, I essentially just wanted to create enough of an area where I get some more surface area for the filler to actually bond onto this area as well as fill the hole and act a little bit like a cap. So that will be more than sufficient for holding this in place. And getting back to this larger one, again the reason I want to put a couple layers of glass over top of this is because larger holes have a tendency for that plug to eventually kind of crack and pop loose, whereas if you have, go over it with some glass, that doesn't happen. All right, 
Now I am not gonna need very much of this just for these two little areas here. So I think I'm only gonna take out, as a guesstimate, roughly about an ounce of material. And to one ounce, eh, that looks pretty close. Eh, close enough for me. That's the beauty about polyester resin. It's not, it doesn't need an exact, an exact uh, mixing ratio. But for, for roughly one ounce of the, uh, of the putty, depending on what kind of temperatures I'm working in, if it's uh, warm temperatures, say like 80 some degrees, I'll probably do about 10 to 12 drops of MEK or the hardener. And if it's a little bit cooler, I keep my shop around 63, 64. I'll probably do closer to 12 to 14 drops and then give it a very, very thorough mix. Now at this point, I have a couple options here. Um, either one, if it was get already getting late in the day, I could just walk away and leave this be, let it set up for tonight, and then come in tomorrow, give it a light sanding, and then I'd be able to you know, continue on. However, um, I kind of wanted to show something here that I just laid this up, this is still wet. Now because I'm gonna be going over top of a polyester-based material with another polyester-based resin, I can go wet on wet. I do not have to let this cure. Uh, as long as they're compatible materials, you can go wet on wet without any, any issues. Now, if I were going to be laying up this glass using epoxy, well then that would be a deal breaker. You can't do that. Or if this filler were epoxy, again, another deal breaker. You cannot go wet on wet in that situation, but because these are both the exact same base, um, we are good to go. So one thing I kind of wanted to comment on here is on this smaller hole here, if I wanted to lay glass, as long as I prepped the surface correctly and dished it out deep enough, absolutely I could. I mean, there'd be absolutely nothing wrong with that. But because it's such a small hole, it really isn't needed. So I'm just kind of showing you the, the two different options. One area that needs it and another area that doesn't. So you can see how they both look in the end. So good morning. Now all the material that we laid up yesterday, it's set up, but it's not fully cured. Uh, both the structural epoxy as well as the, the polyester resin that we used uh, for the glasswork, neither one of those contain any kind of a wax additive, so you need to go over top of them uh, with another type of compound or material to seal that from the air so that everything can fully cure. Now, a couple different options or ways that you can do that. Uh, you can use some PVA or polyvinyl alcohol, or you could use any kind of a, a, a polyester-based uh, resin that has a wax additive mixed into it. Uh, a little, something I'm going to talk about a little bit more next week is there is also the option to use the polyester fairing compound. Um, again, I'll be talking more about that next week. So for right now, uh, my personal preference, I like to use gel coat, uh, which I'm going to be using here. It's the last little bit that I need to use up. So this is a, a regular gel coat, but it'll be marked right on the can here that it contains wax. So let me get this set up and get this coated because then it's going to have to sit and, and cook for the next couple hours before we can come back and sand it. So let's get things set up. Now with the surface sanded flat, now at this stage of the process, the, the repair part is done. The repairs are finished. Now we'd be looking to shift gears and get more into like the finishing stages of things. And when you're talking about finishing, you really, you know, generally there's two options. You either have paint or you have gel coat. And I've done videos on that, you know, what are the advantages, disadvantages of, of both of those materials. If you haven't seen those, I'll put links down below in the description. Um, but if, you're, if we're going to be looking at doing gel coat on something like this, because I use polyester resin 
for polyester-based materials for all, all the, the stages of the repair, I would be 100% able to use uh, gel coat on here. Uh, the only thing that I would do is, because gel coat is a little bit of a thicker material, uh, you would need to sand a little bit of a dip in here, uh, roughly about a sixteenth of an inch you know, low, because that's going to account for the, the gel coat that you would then be applying and then sanding flush and then buffing that out. Um, I've done, again, I've done videos on gel coat color matching and application and finishing and all that other good stuff. And again, I'll put those links down below in the description. Uh, the other option would be to uh, actually finish this with paint. Now, with paint, one thing I, I would recommend because it is such a thin film is I would, even still, even though this is technically smooth, um, I would go over top of this with an epoxy based fairing compound. And there's a, a number of options out there. Alexio makes their own fairing compound, which works fantastic. Uh, Total Boat makes one uh, as well. Total Fair, you see me use that here quite a bit. Now you haven't seen me use the Alexio fairing compound yet, mainly because the, the, it comes, well, the tub that I have, it's like a two gallon tub, and I'm saving that uh, for when I get to the Bertram. I don't want to open this big tub now for just to pull out a, a half of an ounce of uh, a fairing compound. Uh, but that will be, but you will be seeing that. Now I've done some videos a little bit earlier. Uh, I guess it would be this winter, last fall or this winter, this past winter, on uh, on Alexiel. Alexiel has become my absolute favorite go-to two-part paint. It is very DIY friendly and it is just amazing to work with. I mean, as far as a DIY application, you want to just roll the material all and have it look like it was sprayed. This is your paint. So, so there again, uh, like I said, I've done videos on Alexiel and I will link those down below in the description as well. Uh, there's a three part series. I did the roll and tip application as well as two different ways that you can repair that material. And so again, that, that playlist of, I think it's three or four videos will be down below. And I guess on that note, uh, I'm gonna wrap this one up and hopefully my new blades come in so I can get, uh, get back on tearing that transom apart. But I won't know that until next weekend. I still haven't gotten co tracking confirmation, so I'm presuming that it has not shipped yet. But, fingers crossed, it ships tomorrow. Or tonight. <laughs> so with that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found this information helpful for your own projects coming up this spring. And if you did, please hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. I'd love to have you on board. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, you can leave those down below. And as always, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next week. This has been a Boatworks Today Protection.